the readings for Friday, March 19th. Psalm 51, the first 12 verses from the Robert Alter translation. For the lead player, a David psalm, upon Nathan the prophet's coming to him when he had come to bed with Bathsheba. Grant me grace, God, as befits your kindness, with your great mercy, wipe away my crimes. Thoroughly wash my transgressions away and cleanse me from my offense. For my crimes I know and my offenses before me always. You alone have I offended and what is evil in your eyes I have done. So you are just when you sentence, you are right when you judge. Look in transgression was I conceived. Look. In transgression was I conceived, and in offense my mother spawned me. Look, you desired truth in what is hidden, in what is concealed, make wisdom known to me. Purify me with the hyssop, that I be clean. Wash me, that I be whiter than snow. Let me hear gladness and joy. Let the bones that you crushed exult. Avert your face from my offenses and all my misdeeds wipe away. A pure heart create for me, God, and a firm spirit renew within me. Do not fling me from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the gladness of your rescue, and with a noble spirit sustain me. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to chapter 5, verse 4, from the David Bentley Hart translation. Therefore, having a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us cling to the confession. For we have a high priest who is not incapable of suffering along with our weaknesses, but rather one who has been tested in all things like us without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and may find grace for help in due season. For every high priest who has been taken from among human beings is appointed on behalf of human beings as regards to matters relating to God so he might offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Being capable of feelings of mildness towards the ignorant and erring, since he is himself also beset by frailty. And because of this, he must make offerings for sin, as for the people, so also for himself. And no one assumes the honor of himself. Rather, it is the one called by God even as Aaron was. It's easy to set ourselves apart from ordinary people and claim certain privileges for ourselves. Privileges that come from our social status, from our educational backgrounds, from our income, from our families of origin, from our place of upbringing, it's easy to set ourselves apart. It's easy to claim privilege. This is a temptation that we all have experienced and very often succumbed to, putting ourselves over and against, elevating ourselves and claiming that we are better than thou. And yet, even as we reflect on the high priest and priests, even as we think about representatives and the representative, there's this admonition, there's this warning, there is this relativizing that so often we are not comfortable with, that in God's eyes, 
we are all sinners. We have all fallen short. And in God's eyes and in God's sight, we are all forgiven and we are welcome. Sounds terribly unfair. I want the pride of place because of who I am, what I have done, and indeed, because what I have done for God. Don't I deserve this? Don't I need it? Isn't it owed to me? And yet, this approach stems from ignorance, this approach stems very often from a deliberate desire to elevate ourselves, especially when we are surrounded by fools and flatterers who tell us what we want to hear and try to affirm our own elevated status. But we are called to set that aside and approach the throne of grace with humility. Whoever we are, whatever background we come from, whatever our achievements, coming to the throne of grace with all the representatives, all of whom are called to be representatives of God's love in this world, approaching with humility on this journey of faith to hear once again words of admonition, words of forgiveness, words of hope, and words of affirmation. Not because of who we are, but in spite of who we are testifying then to that Son to whom God has revealed his glory and through whom glory radiates on all God's people. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, as we traverse this path to the cross, at times of doubt and despair, at times of darkness, when it seems the light has abandoned us. May the light of your glory illumine us so that we will continue with all your ambassadors, all your disciples, all your representatives, all your priests testifying to that enduring and eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.